Bola Ahmed Tinibu. Had a secret meeting with his predecessor and the British government, the collaborators, to continue to keep them the canon in this dungeon in exchange for presidency. Hello, great viewers and subscribers. Welcome to my noble channel where we tell you the truth the way it is. Now, some of you are asking why is Nigerian government running from their own court? Some of you are also asking why is Tinibu using delayed titles on Mazen Namde Kano's case? Why are some are saying why is Tinibu holding Igbo youths in jail for two years without court appearances? Why is Nigerian government this tyranny? The truth is what you're going to get in this channel. That truth that you seek. And I've told you several times that hey, everything I say here is gospel. Tomorrow, when the time comes, you are going to see them start their faces. Before Bola Ahmed Tinipu became a president of Nigeria, there was so much argument between him and his predecessor Buhari. The truth is that Buhari never wanted him to be a president of Nigeria. But later on, British came in, an agreement was made. And that agreement that was made is for Bola Medinibu in exchange of presidency and power to continue to keep on the colonel in DSS custody without taking him to court or set him free. This was the plan. I see the plan. Some of you may not understand, but that is the fact. Before Namde Kano was kidnapped, like I told you in several of my news, a plan was made. In fact, British government were so much on fire to the extent they wanted to arrest him in England, but they were afraid that he would get out of it because he did not commit any crime known to law. He is a freedom fighter who is asking for his right and right of his people. So for this reason, British government planned with Buhari and some evil men, I still continue to say it, Chatel with the Kenya government to kidnap him the can and brought him back to Nigeria. So why Buhari was at the end? Why he was at the end of his tunnel? They were contemplating or whom to support. In fact, they brought in Bola Medinibu. That was why they gave him a Muslim Muslim ticket. If you don't understand this, know it now. In fact, Shitima was given to him by Buhari government and the British government. Have you asked yourself this question? How can a man like Bola Medinibu, it doesn't matter where he's coming from, he's a Muslim. And at the same time, and that Muslim was given to him not to a good Muslim a radical one because they have good Muslims everywhere Muslims are good people but when it comes to Shetima he is evil this is a man who was in the front line kidnapping Chibok guests sending them to Bukaram while he was governor 
but British government collaborated with Buhari, the predecessor of Bola Metinibu, to bring in Tinibu and bring in Shetima. And they were given a written note, an agreement to sign. And this agreement was what Shetima wanted. Even Tinibu, even though Tinibu does not want it, but later on he succumbed. Because he wants to become president of Nigeria by all means. They have told you that no matter what you do, whom they decide is who will be the president of Nigeria. And you saw it happening in this election. Even though when we all know who won the election, that election was won by P2B. But upon that, somehow they use Wuruwuru by paying in 500 billion. They have to truncate the result and everything. Inet claimed that their machine was tampered, that people were trying to hack their machine. But the question is, if people were trying, was, were trying to hack a machine, where did you get the vote you read? Where did you get the result you read, I mean? That is to show you that this whole thing was planned. Just like Mazi told you from the beginning, that after Buhari, Tinibu will be the next president. That is already decided. This is because it started a long time ago. They planned it a long time ago, and this was why they arrested, kidnapped Mazen Namde Kalo in the first instant. I've said it from long. Keita, it shall never be away with that former president of Kenya, Keita. That man kidnapped a freedom fighter that came to his country for a business trip. He kidnapped him and send him with terrorist government to bring back to Nigeria. He went through torture. What they did was to gather together him, the Britain, Boris Johnson then, and the so-called Buhari government. Just to say, well done, friends. Thank you for accepting my offer. This was a man that his father ran to Ibo land and was living with Chief Pambazika Abechi, may he so rest in perfect peace, while he was being searched for by the same Europeans. Today, you can see. But before I, did, I, I diverted somehow, I was talking about the agreement he made by Bola Metinibu and his predecessor and British government. In fact, he was offered presidency in the Prater of Gold. There was agreement before, but later got on, there, is, there was also agreement. Because they started telling him what to do. They brought in agreement, and that agreement was to make sure one of it, to make sure that Namde Kano continue to stay in DSS custody until he accepts to drop the affagitation. Number two is to continue to keep Igbo people down. Number three is to lock Igbo people in every different prison facilities and none of them should be set free. This is what he was told to do and this is what he is doing. So why should people stay complaining, asking questions? If you have a leader, Leaders that are somehow in Igbo land who are collaborating with all these criminals. So what do you expect? Namde Khan is a good man. Who doesn't want his people to suffer? In fact, he started by protecting Nigerians, by asking for Nigerians' rights, by telling the Nigerian government to do the needful so that Nigerians will have good education, good hospital, good road, good electricity, and all the rest. But, at the process, he saw that the whole thing was not moving forward because even the so-called Nigerians he was fighting for, they don't give a damn. For this reason, he decided to move out with his people. And he did not ask to move out forcefully. He asked for a referendum. This is what a responsible man should do. And this is what he did.
Era fandom is what Nandi Kaura requested for. So, does that warrant to send him to dungeon? This is the question you should be asking the Ebola Ahmed Nibu. Because his predecessor has left him for him and he has continued from where he stops. He doesn't give a damn. He traveled to several countries. He traveled to United Nations. He traveled to AU. He traveled to uh, Ecuador. This is why I'm upset for this, with these people. How can a United Nations accept such man to come to them to give a speech? A man who has refused to obey court order to so become a president of Nigeria by selection. Is it not obvious that both the United Nations are complicit to these crimes? When I say on Safu the plan, I am actually talking about those who are leaders who have refused to allow Africans to rest, to be. Who are doing everything possible to loot Africans dry. These are the people, when I say on Safu the plan, they are the people I'm actually talking about. I'm not talking about a simple white man there in the street, fearing for himself, Jamel. What I am saying in essence is this. There was an agreement. And that agreement is to continue to keep him the current DSS dungeon until he accepts to drop the affair agitation. That is why you can see British not doing anything. They continue to bring out different laws, claiming they are not, uh, it's not support the most. These are the people who fought why they were trying to kidnap the former Nigerian, was he a politician? But when it comes to freedom fighter, who has not committed any crime, British government kept quiet. Their own citizen with British passport. Kenya government had audacity to took him from Kenya and brought him back to Nigeria. And British has not done anything. That would tell you that British had hand in it. This is just a simple thing. So anybody trying to rip British government from this, that person is provoking, provoking me. If really they don't have hand in it by now, Nam the Kano wouldn't have been in Douglas of DSS custody. That's the truth. He is a freedom fighter. He did not commit any crime. Those are going around with take care for the seven killing people in Boland, in Benue State, in Plateau State. How many of them have they arrested? How many of them have they kept in third job? This is the question you should be asking yourself. They treat them with kiss gloves. Why man the color remain in this sense because of the suffering, being tortured and different type of things? And you are here telling me all sort of stories. Look, the truth must be told, and it should be told now. Everything I've said here is gospel. Ahmed Dilibu had an agreement with British government and his predecessor Buhari, who just left office, to continue to keep Nam the Khan in dungeon. Just wait. Let them face the court case. If they they go to face the what are they even facing? Come to think of it. He has been set free. What court case are you talking about? He's been kept in DSS custody illegally. And you can still see some Nigerians, especially Europeans. You will see them coming out to Nyano Patenia Nya. They will tell you. Call him a sort of names. What did he do? Because he wanted Biafra to live a good life. Those who have the oil, but they could not suffer. Is this what he did? This is what is called tribalism. And this is what I dislike so much in life. What time shall tell? I think I've come to the end of this news. Jay Biafra.